Hello everybody. So in this video, we're gonna go over the results of installing the low pressure fuel pump by PFS. But I don't want to bore you guys on a bunch of data and information that might seem irrelevant to you or just a bunch of jargon. At the end of the day, the question is, did the fuel pump do what it's supposed to do? And is the car faster? Am I right or am I right? We are gonna look at some data, but I'm gonna try to make it super easy to consume so you know, is this doing what it's supposed to do or is it not? And let me tell you, we'll have to see. All right, I'm gonna be completely real with you guys. Before we get completely into this data, I tried to record everything into like a little journey of getting, you know, the right e-blend, go into fuel stations, which I'll probably throw in this video just to kind of give you guys some life. We're heading to a gas station right now to get some E85. The app is saying, you know, fill up the rest of the tank with E85. The HEB we're going to right now, I tested it like on Saturday. I used a little fuel tester kit. I don't think I'm gonna do any pulls right now. It's 94 degrees outside. So I might have to wait until tomorrow morning to do a log. I don't know how busy this gas station is gonna be. It's in the middle of town. Um, it's lunchtime, it's 11.30. See y'all at HEB. We have to reverse it to a spot into someone's butt to get E. Our e test kit. I'm gonna show you guys how to do this real quick. And luckily, e here is only 235. Bro, I did not bring my wallet. This is a huge fail. I forgot my wallet. HEB does not take Apple Pay. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go to Sunoco. E at Sunoco is probably like 30, 40 more cents per gallon. And I need to put in about eight to probably eight gallons, eight or nine gallons, eight, 40 times nine. I'm probably paying three to four dollars more. <sighs> But I'm probably gonna spend more money on gas, probably just like going back home, grabbing my wallet, I'm on the other side of town. Sunoco, how much are you going to tax me? E85 here, 285. Am I happy? Not at all. We have water in here. It's to the, it's to the fill line. And I need to use my phone for Apple Pay, so one second. In this right here, I'm gonna fill it up to where it says gasoline fill. Put the gold. Oh my gosh. Spent 14 cents. Let me redo this. Low key at Okay, low key, I think we overshot it. We have 10 gallons in there. I was expecting only to put like eight, nine gallons. So we might be reading like E. Uh, we're only at E60. It's hard to control the spout. Whoever owns that company that makes the test kits, bro, y'all could have just made the, the hole just a little bit bigger so you can actually put the nozzle in there. Not everything is rainbows and sunshines. But we made it happen after like two weeks of, you know, going to gas stations, trying to get the right amount of E, working and just everything going on. It's not easy to get logs sometimes. So tuners are patient with you. So be patient with your tuner. And if you have the right tuner or the right company to work with, they'll get you those logs in a very decent time. Shout out Racebox. But yeah, that's all I really wanted to say. Ooh and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, I don't say that enough because I really don't care for subscribers, but at the same time, you know, it'd be great to see the channel grow because I think I've seen a lot of growth in this channel. We've gained like 700 subs in the last year of creating content. I've only created like six, seven videos since, maybe eight. This is cool. It'd be cool if we can get to 1K before what at the end of august that's like a month and a half today is july 17 shout out to my sisters it's their birthday but yeah let's get into the data all right here we go so we're on data zap right now everyone should know what data zap is it's where you can create these logs which turn into csv files and you basically upload them and depending on the parameters and such you can see what your car is doing. So let's go to the first one, um, which is right here, V7. That's just the revision I'm on. Uh, 26 PSI, E40, before the low pressure fuel pump installed. Do not mind this. 
All right, so here we are. I created a little preset for fueling. Um, but before we even go into fueling, let's go ahead and look into boost. So I know it says 40 PSI as the target. 40 PSI is not the target. That is just the total pressure target. If we look at ambient air pressure, it is sitting at 14. So let's subtract 14 from the PSI target. What does that equal guys? 26, okay? So our target is 26 PSI. If we look from the beginning of the log, we start the log at like 3K and boom, we shoot up, rev it out to 7K, okay? A full third gear log. This first log is the one I'm gonna go kind of in depth in and then further on, we're just gonna kind of show that the product does or doesn't work. So let's go ahead and turn on fuel. I know there's a lot on the screen. Let's just break it down real quick. Right now we're at 2800 RPM. Okay, throttle position, which is how far your foot is down on the pedal. We had the flex fuel content, very easy to understand. We had the vehicle speed, very easy to understand. And let's look at the CAN input pressure sensor KPA. So what that is, that is the reflex zero to 10 bar pressure sensor. Why do we need this? Because B58s don't have low pressure sensors, low pressure fuel pump sensors. So this is important because it senses the pressure before it gets to any injector, make sure the fuel line is is well pressurized, all right? So as you can see, in like these cruising low speeds between 27 to 29, you know, we're sitting at 560, okay? And I'm pretty sure you're looking at the screen, you're like, oh my gosh, that blue line dips a lot. Yeah, okay, so right here, you can see the throttle is at 98, which means my foot is basically down on the floor. Don't know why it says 100, maybe 98 is the limit. That's essentially my foot on the floor. I slammed it at 3K. The computer and the engine will know what to do. It's not just gonna, all of a sudden rip the motor apart, no. So on E40, you know, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going. Right now we're like at 10 PSI boost right there in the middle of the range at 4,000 RPM. Fuel is still good at 530. Um, that's kind of what it was at before up here at 580, but it's it's dipping, all right? Mind you, our target is 26 PSI. So we start going, port injection starting to fire around 3,600. We start crashing around 4,500. Now this is where most of the boost kicks in. Right around here is where boost ramps up around 3,900 uh, RPMs. Let's turn this back on, 3,900 RPMs. We're still good on fuel, okay? But then port injection starts kicking in and it starts kicking in heavy around right here where it crosses. We're at 4,500 PSI or 4,500 RPM and we're dropping down to 390 fuel pressure. That's below what we should be at for sure. Now you can see by the boost, we touched the target. We're still making pretty close to target, you know, all within one to two PSI. But you know, I don't think this blue line right here looks very good, does it? No. So this was all before the uh, low pressure fuel pump was installed. You know, I don't think anyone wants to see these numbers for a low pressure fuel pump. So let's go back to the full diagram. You know, we're still on, this is only E40. We're only on E40. 40 and we're crashing this hard on fuel. So let's go back and let's see the data for the installed fuel pump run, okay? E40 before, E37, that was pretty close, but this was after the low pressure fuel pump was installed. Don't mind the boost oscillation. That's some cleaning up we have to do with the wastegate and such. I already talked to my tuner about that. So you can already see out the gate, Okay, you can see this little blue part right here. That is my throttle. So before we even get on it all the way, we're at 28 to 27. You can see the fuel pressure sensor for the low pressure fuel pump is staying at 600, which is already higher than what the OEM one was. So boom, right here, we start flooring it. My throttle is already at 98 by 3000 RPM. We're going, we're going, we're going. Again, target's 26 PSI. We get up, let's go ahead and look at 4,500 RPM. Cause on the last graph, this is where we were crashing out. Let me go ahead and pull it up real quick. All right, so here's the last graph of the before low pressure fuel pump install. 4,500 basically RPM and we're at 390 for the fuel pressure. We go over here, we go to 4,500. We are still staying very strong at 560 for our low pressure fuel. Again, E37. E40, that's what both of these are on essentially. 26 PSI, and we're still staying strong. Let's go to the top of the rev range around 6,600. Let's go to 6,600 here. Fuel pressure is down to 240, crazy. Now let's go here. And here, fuel pressure is still at 550. And this is, uh, 
our V7 revision, same one as the last one, 26 PSI, same as the last one. All we did was change the low pressure fuel pump. Now let's go a little further. Go ahead and look at this one. This is the new version eight revision, 26 PSI on E60. I was supposed to go to E65, but I suck at mixing fuel, I guess, 45. And we'll go to 65, All right? Is that what we're looking at, 45? 65 okay so as you can see before we even put our foot to the pedal between here and here we're staying at 600 590 fuel pressure we go we go we go right now we're at 19 psi boost around here fuel pressure is at 560 ethanol content we're at you know e e59 e60 like i said oh, let's go to 6600 or 6500 530 fuel pressure everything's good like Fuel is not crashing. And if we compare V7 26 PSI on E40 to E60, the biggest thing about the E mix between E40, E60, it's all about having enough fuel. You know, we require a lot more fuel when we're running more E because it dissipates faster or burns faster, such, okay? So we look at 6600, we're at 530. Let's look at E40, 6600, we're at 560. So we got 530, 540, 560. We're off 530 for 20% more ethanol. All right, now let's go to another map. So let's go to 30 PSI on E60. Go and pull up all the parameters before we even put our foot to the floor. We're sitting at 590, 600. Same as usual. Let's go to 4,500, chilling. Right now, this is making about 20, no, 18 pounds of boost right here. Chilling at 560, again, E60 blend. Now we're just targeting 30 PSI, okay? Let's go to 6,600. And this one, I kind of let off early, but we're still in the upper end of the range, still floor to the pedal. E60, we touched 44.3 PSI, which really is 30 PSI. And we're still sitting at 520 fuel pressure, okay? So we're staying consistent. Compared to this one, 66 on E60, but 26 PSI, 530. Now let's go to the final maps for actually doing E65 on both 26 and 30 PSI. We'll go 26 first. Pull up parameters. Again, 590, 600, 590, I guess, throughout here. Let's go to 45. So right now we're at 21 PSI. Still saying at 560. Uh, E65, actual E65. And it's running good. Let's go up to 66. That's a lot of sixes. So here we're running about 24 PSI. I think this might've been a bad pull. Again, we have some wastegate stuff to kind of adjust and timing because we're trying to make sure fueling is all good before we even crank it up 66 we're making 24 psi fuel staying at 530 so the results do show that this does work let's go to our highest psi map on our best ethanol mix here we go staying at 590 600 before the floor is to the pedal before the floor is to the pedal before the pedal is to the floor let's go to 45 staying at 550 now this one we're targeting 30 PSI, 30 or 31 essentially with the target on here apparently. So let's go to 6600 RPM. And we're staying at 520 on E65. Could we run E85? We probably really could. We have the headspace um, with the port injection at the 1050 cc's. Again, we're all limited by the trans, but you know, 44% duty cycle for the injectors. E65, we're touching 29 PSI here, you know, and it felt really good. I went into fourth gear for this one. Staying in fourth gear, 520 PSI the entire time. Vehicle speed's at 100 essentially. Um, so yeah, everything looks good. Floor is to the pedal throughout the entire time. Fuel stays above 500, 500. Like how much more can I complain? I really can't complain. So this product does its job like it should. All right, so it's the next day and I just finished editing the data log portion of this video and it was a lot of work. So if you guys can leave a like on this video, that'd be great. But before you go, I know Chris wanted me to mention that there were like two new products coming out with PFS. I think one of them was a upgraded fuel pump that pushes more flow uh, through the low pressure fuel pump, obviously. I think it's rated up to a thousand on E98, where the one I have right now I was rated up to 800 um, horsepower on E98. And I think he's coming out with like a surge tank solution. I have no idea what a surge tank does. Should I know what it does? Probably. But long story short, point of this video, if you have a G80, I think a G20, a G01, my car, G02, X4, F97, F98, anything with the same fuel tank system, mainly G chassis, but they do also sell F chassis stuff. Go to PFS, get you a fuel pump, plug and play, no need for wires, uh, 
reflex, hop switch, don't need any of that. Get a fuel pump that works. The data shows that it works. And yeah, if you guys want to see videos of me doing pulls, you know, AI generated race content, leave a like on this video, comment down below what you want to see and I'll make it happen. Hope you guys have a great one and subscribe, please.